Every day, dozens of people come through the emergency department at Staten Island University Hospital North. The waiting room is, is packed. The treatment area itself is very crowded. Hospital officials say the new center will triple that treatment space. Officials say the ER will cost around $40 million. Dr. Ardolik says it's a small price to pay to care for the community. We take care of the critically injured and we take care of the people that really don't have anywhere else to go to. It's just great, not only for the people of Staten Island, but frankly for the doctors and the nurses, that they have a facility, finally, that matches their professionalism and their compassion. The need has never been greater, and with the support of the community, we've been able to build this magnificent facility. We went from a really small, inappropriate space to a beautiful uh, 40,000 square foot structure so where we can really, really take care of people the way they deserve to be treated. The first reaction I had was it allayed my fears of a very dark, dingy, fearful environment. Urgent care has been probably in many ways our biggest transformation. We're able to see well over 25% more people in the same eight rooms that we had before. We didn't change the number of spots that we use, we made them better spots. This is unbelievable, Un unbelievable. Um, it's going to ease everyone's fears and I think that it's great with all the rooms and how they want to get people in and people out and no more waiting and waiting and waiting and just being at ease in an emergency room is going to be helpful for everyone. Our ability to take care of patients is completely different. The safe room for people who are victims of sexual assault, the ability to have an appropriate space for those people with a separate area to examine them and then a separate area uh, to actually interview and talk to them and a shower area and then a separate exit so that they can safely leave into the outside world, that's really made the lives of people who are really at a horrendously horrible moment in their life so much better. I think that the new ER will make it a lot easier and a lot more efficient for EMS to be able to get the patients treated in the most timely manner possible. It will afford the EMS people on the island to get out back into the community that much faster. We have treated severe traumas at this point, multiple ones actually, as recently as this morning, that we're now able to fit an appropriate sized trauma team, multiple pieces of equipment, and bring the care directly to the patient without having to squeeze people in and really manage people in an, in an appropriate space. We gave tours to the community for two days and so many people came out and really genuinely showed their support. You can see where their main thought was the patient. It's immaculate, it's state of the art, it's just quite amazing. One of the biggest joys for me has, to, has been to watch people who don't work here, don't, you know, but just happen to live in the community and are genuinely proud of walking into the structure and being taken care of. Regina McGinn was my mother. She was a physician here at Staten Island University Hospital. Um, she was a mother of four and you know, a great all-around person. And she had a great impact on the medical field as well as you know, the surrounding community. She also was director of the education here at uh, Staten Island University Hospital. Regina McGinn was one of my first residents, in fact. And, uh, we established a very close working relationship and a friendship. From the very onset, uh, she had a great deal of enthusiasm for patient care. But she was very, very uh, involved in um, not only teaching of uh, doctors, but teaching of the community. When she knew she had cancer and she was passing, she actually was, you know, more driven than I've ever seen before. She 
came home and she told us, she's like, I do not want flowers at my funeral. I want um, money donated instead of flowers to the education center. She's like, this is something that I'm so passionate about and I'd rather not waste money on flowers. Regina was the associate director, program director for medical education. This was her dream. So we decided that with the help of the medical staff, we would fulfill that dream. So the reason you see the ceiling jump up in this way, this is going to be an auditorium. And uh, the front of the auditorium will be here with the stage. Doctors come together for educational purposes from all over the area. And we bring in experts from around the world. We've been doing it in a little conference room. Now we'll be able to do it in a 250 seat auditorium. The importance of this is unmeasurable. We will produce better doctors. We will become better doctors and better teachers. We'll be teaching our community, our friends, uh, our neighbors, how to better care for themselves and for their families. It's really, really easy to understand how an emergency department actually affects a community. It's a little bit more abstract to kind of get a sense of how an education center is actually beneficial to a community. And yet, what I really want you to think about is who are the future clinical leaders of tomorrow? Who is going to take up the reins when Dr. Bazana decides to slowly, many years from now, slowly walk away from medical care? Who are these people actually going to be? The only way to make sure they come here and that they stay here is to train them ourselves, to train our future leaders and to make sure that they stay in Staten Island. Our family is so honored to have this education center named in our honor. Knowing that you don't have to be physically here to have such an impact on the community is just unbelievable. Just being able to come to the center and pass by it and see her name and know that her dream, which has ultimately become our dream, is really coming true.